Assalamu alaikum class. Today we are going to study about clinical microbiology. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to understand infection, disease, normal microbiota, transient microbiota, and opportunistic microorganism. You will be able to explain pathogenicity and virulence and understand different types of diseases and infections and how microbes cause disease and what are the different virulence factors of a pathogen. At the end, you will be able to understand the different stages of infectious diseases. Clinical microbiology or medical microbiology deals with prevention, diagnosis and treatment of infectious disease. There are three main objectives of clinical microbiology that is to study the causative agent of an infectious disease which is also called etiology to study the pathogenesis of the disease which is the manner in which a disease develops and finally how the microbial pathogen affects the structure and function of the host there are two terms used in clinical microbiology, infection and diseases. Sometimes they are referred as synonyms, but actually they are not. Let's see what's the difference between the two. Infection means presence and colonization of pathogenic microorganism in our body. However, a disease occurs when this infection leads to change in the normal state of health. That is, you are not able to perform all your function properly. An infection may exist in the absence of a disease. For example, the body may be infected by a virus, for example AIDS, but the person could have no effect on their health or show no symptoms of that disease. That means the person may have infection but not necessarily leads to a disease. So, all infections are not diseases, but all diseases are infection. Every disease that affects the body alters the body structure and function in a particular way. These alternations are usually indicated by several kinds of evidences. These are signs, symptoms and syndrome. Let's see what they are. Signs are the objective changes that a physician can observe and measure. So they are objective and measurable, like your blood pressure, temperature, fever. They are all signs of a disease. However, there are some changes which are only experienced by the patient. These are highly subjective, like pain, dizziness, nausea, all of them are not measurable and can only be explained by the patient. These are called symptoms. You can see this is a sign and this is a symptom. A syndrome is a combination of group of signs and symptoms which are particularly associated with a specific disease. There are some effects which remain long after the disease has gone. These are called sequelae. For example, as you have seen in case of polio, kids remain paralyzed for all of their life. That's a sequelae of poliomyelitis. There are some factors which make some people more prone to a disease. These are called predisposing factors which include gender, climate, age, fatigue, and inadequate nutrition. For example, measles is more affected in kids. Microbes which cause disease are called pathogens. There are two terms to define the characteristics of a pathogen. First, is pathogenicity. Pathogenicity is the ability of microbes to cause disease. 
so organisms which can cause disease are called pathogens and which cannot cause disease are called non pathogen another term used to define or characterize pathogens is virulence virulence is the severity of the disease caused by microbes in other terms it's the degree of pathogenicity virulence is generally measured in terms of lethal dose 50 that is the amount of microbes required to kill 50% of the organism in an experimental setup as you can see in this diagram there are two strains strain a and strain b 30 organisms are required to kill 50% of the experimental organism by strain a however 50 such organisms of strain b is required to kill 50% of population of an experimental organism that means strain a is more virulent because only 30 of such organism can cause the death of 50% organism as compared to strain b so there are many different determinants of virulence of a pathogen which can be either genetic biochemical or structural features that enables it to produce a disease in a host not all microbes are pathogens microbes that establish permanent colonies inside our body or on the body without producing diseases make up the normal microflora or microbiota Now, on average there are 14 to 10 to the power 13 microbial cell in a healthy adult that means many parts of our body are not sterile you can see either the normal flora of our nasal epithelium of stomach and of intestine these bacteria or microorganism are beneficial and doesn't allow pathogen mine pathogenic microbes to grow or colonize by a process called microbial antagonism many factors determine the distribution and composition of normal flora among these are nutrients physical and chemical factors the host defense and mechanical factors microbes can only colonize the body sites that can supply appropriate nutrients These nutrients may be derived from dead cells, food in the gastrointestinal tract, secretion, and excretory products of cell and substance in the body fluid. There are two types of normal flora or microbiota in our body, which are called which are resident. or transient resident microflora is the one which are permanently present at a specific location for a very long period of time for example e coli present in our gastrointestinal tract the large intestine are resident flora of gastrointestinal tract transient microflora are the one which are present for a very short period of time or relatively shorter this compared to the resident for example they can last for hours to months some of the normal flora may become pathogenic under specific conditions they are called opportunistic microorganism or opportunistic pathogen an example is e coli as you have seen e coli is a normal flora of but it's harmless in large intestine but it gains entry into the urinary bladder lung spinal cord or wounds it may cause severe infections such as utis pulmonary infection meningitis or abscesses respectively it's time for our first concept checkpoint <coughs> Using the information we got from this lecture, try to solve these three questions. In the first question, you have to identify a microbe which is a normal flora in infants, but it can also cause 
stomach cramps, bloody diarrhea, and vomiting in adult people. Second question is, describe how a disease can be infectious but not contagious. You need to come up with one example and how it is infectious but not contagious. The last one, using this graph, you have to identify the LD50 of this pathogen. Please go through the lecture and try to solve them. We will discuss their answer in our interactive sections.